There are those that just want to be left alone. And those that just won't leave them alone. Which one are you? The Ernest Hancock Show. $24.5 trillion in U.S. national debt. $144 trillion in unfunded liabilities in 2015. Man, it's already done. Done, 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 done. Oh, 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 and they did the uh, S-510 thing. Yep, 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 yep. Food supply control bill passes in surprise Sunday night vote. You, unanimous consent from the Senate. They snuck that bad boy in there, didn't they? Yeah, you thought, hey, man, we might be able to sit. Nope, they did it. Yep, did it, did it, did it, did it. What did they do? Why? You know, you're not allowed to survive, man. You know, this is all about all about control. Okay, all right, well, we're all trying to get, you know, hopefully you did your weekend assignment and, and watch that video I was talking about. It's still, it's it, it's up on top of the page now. Somebody else put it up there. Um, you know, Porter Stansbury on, you know, here we go. And you need to learn how you're going to survive this thing. So hopefully you took the time to watch that because it is, it, it's going to get bad. Well, we knew, you know, what was going to, and we had, in our wildest dreams, we, we didn't even put a limit on it. There is no limit. You know, when you talk to us and, and good friends that know that have been able to survive this thing and, and prosper from it, from it, even in the late 70s and early 80s, uh, a lot of, you know, libertarians that really took this to heart, you know, made lots of money. They're going to make a lot more again now. Why? Because they know. Well, they're trying to make it. You know, they, they put limits on commodities. You yeah, know, they want to do that, too. They're going to say, oh. You bought too much silver, man. You're not allowed. <laughs> so, you know, there's all kinds of machinations going on. But we understood, and we didn't know how, we just knew that it was going to be hyperinflation. It, it, it was inevitable. They could not sustain it 15 years ago. We knew they could not do it. It wasn't mathematically possible. And they were just going to keep spending. Because, you know, no matter what lawsuit you filed, no matter how much you highlighted it, no matter how much you did in the media, because before the Internet, who, who was uh, beating the drum for them to do what they were doing? The local media, the television, the radio, the newspapers. You know, every now and then you'll get somebody up there making a big deal out of it. And people go, yeah, those libertarians, I remember they were kind of complaining about the, you know, what they didn't understand. Or, and who do you blame? I mean, they're educated in the mandatory youth indoctrination camps. You know, I, how, how do you get this stuff out? You just know it's going to come and everybody's ox is going to get gored. And it was when we had the uh, different departments of the police department here before the TSA thing we did before Thanksgiving, um, we told them, we said, look, you think we don't know what condition your pensions are in? You think that's not going to play into this? You think that the city and the government, this next year's budget, they're not going to be slicing stuff? I mean, you think, what do you think is going to happen? That's when they needed their break. They're going to take a break. And then it came back. So we know, assume, you know, I tell a lot of these politicians this, like when we were at the Bill of Rights thing last week, talking to Senate Appropriations Chairman, I'm going, you know, Russell Pierce, Mr. SB 1070 fame. I go, look, Russell, you, you assume I know everything. You know, we we know the deal's already been made. They're they're doing whatever, because Arizona is in the worst shape per capita. You know, for how many people that live here than any other state in the nation, which puts us in a big, big vulnerable position. Who put us there? Well, everybody, but you know, Janet Napolitano had a big giant hand in that thing. She was governor during this decade. So I'm going, you know, well, you think she doesn't know? Heck, she helped do it. Okay. <clears throat> So what we did is we go, all right, we're going to highlight this. Well, we highlight it. It goes through, and eventually it gets to the point to where they go, that we're dismissing it. You're never going to win in this court. You're confusing me with someone that gives a crap what some black robe taxpayer-funded guy says. You know, or a, a bank of them. I mean, it, does, it doesn't matter. We wanted to articulate this, get it on the record, have it in the court record, make sure the public understood what our concern was. Here it is. They ruled that it was legal for them to lease all these properties, long-term leases, even though they kind of, they got to fund it every year, though. As long as they fund it each year, then they can sell every asset the state has to whomever and then lease it back. Well, that's what's going on now. They already did it. The state buildings belong to private investors. And, you know, they're connected and they were the buddies of and everything. Do I even need to look? I mean, I already know. So... They got a guaranteed leaser. 
You know, if I, you know, what's the deal on that? Now, I, I tell you what, we'll finance and bank and investor and whatever on this state capitol building. I, I think I probably got me a pretty good chance of having a tenant. And if I don't, I got a lobbyist for that. Yep, that's where we're at. So now we're in a situation to where this isn't just Arizona. Arizona was one of the worst, and we were highlighting as much as we could. But this has been happening all over the country. And this is something that we learned when we first started getting our Internet account, accounts in the mid-90s. We were dealing with other activists, mostly libertarians, around the country. And what they were telling us is that, you know, these concerns that you have, it's going across the country all at the same time. There was a libertarian friend that would come to all of our summits. I think he just missed the last couple of years because he got nailed. And this is what happened. In San Diego, they had a big public works program that they did. That was some big water park kind of city, whatever, spend money thing. And they were able to stop it. They filed all kinds of lawsuits, did initiatives, and things San Diego. What they did is the political action committee that they created for not filling out the paperwork correctly, they went after the treasurer, this gentleman, his name was Steve. They went after him, I think it was for like three quarters of a million dollar fines. And his life is done. Financially to the man, well, he's trading silver now <laughs> because they went after him personally. Yeah, we're going. Oh, you're going to pay. You cost. Oh, heck no. This is it's it's just it's, they call them slap suits here in Arizona. All these different public programs and so on. Anybody that was opposing them, they would just bury you with paperwork in the courts. Well, then there was this one gentleman that I opposed on the baseball stadiums they were doing here where Jerry Coangelo is the owner of the Phoenix Suns was behind this. And they did the Diamondback baseball stadium. And this was the guy that I was in opposition. They hired the county uh, attorney's office, hired this private attorney just to oppose me. Well, I kept my cost down. I'm just like, yeah, what he said. You know, I didn't care what the court said. I was just doing everything I could to make sure everybody understood. And I was following the law, making sure you know, it went through years, back and forth, whatever. And they went to a court of appeals. What it affected was their bond rating. When you have certainly a legitimate claim that if you look at it and you're a bond rater in California, New York, Washington, whatever, and you're doing these municipal bonds that fund this, and you look at the merits of the case, they go, "Ooh, man, he's got a good case. The interest rate went up. They're going, you're costing us millions of dollars by doing this. I go, yeah, because I'm right, you son of a... You know, and who is the attorney that they hired? The same guy that would then come to these other people and want to be on their side. He want to be like, you know, the equivalent of my attorney on these other things. And I told these people, I go, free? He's infiltrating you guys. Don't do it. Sure enough, that's what happened. We have institutional knowledge here, and there are other people and organizations around the country that have it on a federal level. Each state had there's a wealth of understanding of what's coming. I tell you these things because we saw what was happening a long time ago. It is inevitable. It is done. There, everybody's like, well, if we get the right guy in there, if we vote, if we this, if we that, if we challenge, if we you know, pledge allegiance, if we pray, if we whatever, we're going to stop. You can't stop. You, the bell's already been rung. It's done. How do we survive this thing? So that's what we're going to be talking about. I'm going to play you some clips here, and I and I want to, and we'll do it in several segments if we need to. But uh, uh, we'll start it in the next segment, get it before the top of the hour. What happened was we understood how bad it was by discovery and going through these lawsuits that per capita Arizona is going to be the worst. And here came Janet Napolitano. Now keep in mind, she was U.S. attorney going after the militias in the late '90s. That's why we knew in the Southern Poverty Law Center coming to Arizona and you know, we got all these white supremacists and all that kind of, it was just, it was just theater. So we get Heidi Byrick, project director of Special Projects. That was her special project. Have her on. And then the Black Chris thing with the gun. He's black. Dang it, just messed up all their stuff. So what are they going to do with Arizona? I don't know. I don't know. We're going to go ahead and we'll start right off the next segment, Pinky Swear, with Meredith Whitney and kind of give you just the end result of where we're at. We saw it was coming. How do we protect ourselves? We'll talk about that, too, in the next hour. We'll be right back. You guys don't go away. I promise I'll play it when we come back.